Welcome to CoinChimp YouTube channel. Today we'll learn how to create KRC721 NFT collections with multiple traits and rarity management. We'll go over image design, best practices for metadata, how to upload to IPFS, and finally deploying your NFTs. Stick around and let's get started. When looking at the most successful NFT collections today, you'll notice they primarily use PNG images. However, JPG is also an option. If your design has plain colors and a minimalistic style, PNG is the better choice to maintain sharp quality. But if you're working with multiple colors and different tones, JPG is the best format. Typically, NFT image files range from 200 kilobytes to 600 kilobytes with resolutions between 500 and 1000 pixels. For this tutorial, I'll use JPG because of the complexity of the design I'm using as an example. Let's start by checking the details from existing projects. To do that, we'll connect to the indexer and review the deployment info. For NFT collections, you'll notice they define the BURI as the base IPFS CID address. This BURI points to the IPFS folder where all metadata is stored using numbers. Unlike other formats, they do not use a JSON extension. To access the metadata, we use the CID we just collected, along with the token number we want to explore. This will reveal the metadata of the NFT token, including the actual image address. If we want to verify the image used for a specific token, we simply copy the CID and add the image file at the end. The metadata content must include key details such as the name, description, and most importantly, the image IPFS address, which should start with IPFS colon slash slash additionally it should define the attributes that determine the rarity of the NFT. Attributes should follow a consistent structure to ensure compatibility with NFT marketplaces and tools. It's crucial to ensure the file is free of format errors or typos, as any mistake could cause issues with how the NFT is displayed and interpreted. For the image creation process, you can use a mix of low cost, and open source tools like Procreate and GIMP. Procreate, a paid app available for iPad, is great for designing layers that act as traits, allowing you to create different styles to match community preferences. It also lets you export each layer independently, making it easier to manage individual elements. For layers, it's best to use the PNG format to maintain a transparent background, which is essential for combining different layers later. GIMP, a free and open source tool for desktops, is excellent for processing images, especially for adjusting resolution, resizing, and retouching. Some of these edits can be more challenging to do on a tablet with Procreate. A good workflow is to design layers in Procreate, export them as PNGs, and refine them in GIMP for final adjustments. This combination gives you flexibility and precision in your NFT image creation process. For this tutorial, I have organized the different layers as PNG files into separate trait folders. This structure allows me to easily combine them using an app to generate different NFT variations. Additionally, I've included a legendary trait, a full image NFT with no layers. This can serve as an exclusive incentive for collectors offering perks like special access or a monetary reward. The reward can come from the royalty collection of every mint, making it a valuable and sought-after asset. Since the minting process in KRC721 is randomized, there is no guarantee that your next mint will include a legendary trait. This adds an element of gamification, introducing scarcity and unpredictability, which can boost engagement and increase demand for the collection. As part of this tutorial, I've developed an NFT creator prototype not perfect, but useful enough to help you in your KRC721 journey as a creator. 
this app will combine all your layered traits, except for the legendary, to generate your full collection while calculating all possible unique combinations. Since the CID for the images may change, I'll cover that topic in the next section of this video. Make sure to add your NFT's name and description before uploading your zip file containing all your PNG file layers, organized as we showed before. To improve flexibility, I added an option to upload a JSON file with custom rules for trait combinations and rarity. First, you need to specify the order in which all layers will be combined to avoid undesired results, such as having the background appear on top of other layers. Then you can add additional rules. For example, I can prevent a pink background from being paired with a pink t-shirt to maintain better color composition. I also set rarity limits, such as ensuring that only one NFT in the collection features a green cap. Additionally, I included the ability to skip specific trait layers in some images, such as removing the hat layer from certain NFTs. For legendary traits, I restricted the full image crescendo NFT to a maximum of two instances in the entire collection. Once the rules are applied, the final combinations are shuffled, ensuring an unpredictable minting order, which enhances the gamification element of the project. Once the process is complete, you can download all the generated images and metadata files to upload them to IPFS. Regarding the app, you can check it out on my GitHub repository, link in the description. While I can't commit to full technical support, I'll do my best to answer any questions on a best effort basis. Now let's upload our work to IPFS. For this demonstration, I'll use only 10 tokens to keep things simple. We must start by uploading the images first to obtain the CID, which we'll later reference in our metadata files. I'll add the first 10 images to a folder, select the folder, and upload it to my public file section. The service will generate a unique CID for the folder containing my images. Once the upload is complete, we can verify the images by opening any of them using their CID-based URL. Next, I'll update my metadata files to include the new CID. Since I have multiple metadata files, I'll use the SED tool to quickly update all references. For larger collections with thousands of metadata files, using SED or a similar batch editing tool is the most efficient way to update them. Additionally, when dealing with thousands of files, I recommend using the APIs provided by your IPFS provider instead of manually uploading through the browser. This method ensures faster and more reliable uploads. Now let's verify that the metadata update was successful. I'll check one of the updated files to confirm the correct CID is in place. With the metadata files ready, I'll create a new folder and add the 10 metadata files corresponding to the first 10 tokens. I'll then upload this folder to IPFS, just like we did with the images. One important thing to note, I can rename the folders on IPFS without affecting the CID since the CID is based on the content, not the folder name. Now let's verify that our metadata is working as expected. I'll open a tokens metadata file using its CID and check if it properly references the correct image. Everything looks good, and now our NFT collection is successfully uploaded to IPFS. Now that we have everything in order with our images and metadata, we can proceed with the deployment of our NFT collection and get it ready for minting. I've developed a small app called deploycollection.ts. Details are in the description. We will use the CID of our metadata folder including the IPFS colon slash slash prefix. This address will be placed in the BURI field and used as the payload in the commit transaction. Once the deployment is complete, we can check it in the indexer 
to verify that the addresses correctly point to the metadata files and images. And that's it. Our NFT collection is deployed and ready. If you want a deeper dive into how this works, check out my previous video, where I explain the process in detail. That's all for this tutorial. Now you have everything you need to create, upload, and deploy your own KRC721 NFT collection. With these steps, your NFTs are ready for minting and fully accessible on IPFS. I hope you found this content valuable. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more tutorials and insights like this. Also, be sure to follow me on Twitter to stay updated with the latest developments in this technology and beyond. Let's keep exploring and learning together. Until the next time, cheers.